what are some ways people can make money in the real estate game in 2024? I think I saw you speak at an event and you were like, biggest strategy that I would tell you guys to do is do micro events. And I was kind of stuck at this income level of like mid six figures. This is like, you know, 2016. And uh, I started to get to watch social media and just see like, what are people doing on, on content marketing? Got seen by more people, just providing tips. And business started to take off. Then the next year it went up again and next year it went up again. So I had this exponential growth and, you know, uh, not flexing, but I'm just saying making millions of dollars when I wasn't before. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Monday Mondays where we talk about three core topics, how to make money, how to invest money, and how to give it away to charity. Today's guest knows how to do all of those things. And what's really fun is he's in the real estate space. He throws live events. He speaks at events. He does social media and everything in between. So this can be a really fun episode. I've spoken at his events for years and years and years, and I'll keep speaking it as long as he keeps inviting me to his future events. He gets 700 people, 1,000 people, 1,200 people, 1,500 people to show up to his events over and over and over, year after year with some really, really, really good name, big name speakers back to back to back. And I've watched it evolve. And it's so fun to see everything that he's done. On the social media side, same thing. i watched constant, constant, constant content over and over and over and over. This goes viral, this works out, this gets big, reels, long form content, everything in between. And I just keep watching, whether it's social media, real estate, live events, Neil Dingra has done all of it. So please give a warm round of applause to Mr. Neil. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Dan. So the way we like to do it is to give us a quick two minute bio so we can yep. get straight to the money. So really quick, I was in the, like you said, real estate mortgage space for years. And then um, you ever have this feeling like, you know, you're meant to do something more than what you're doing right Heck now. Yeah. Like it happens all, it, it was happening to me for years and I would just ignore it. And then finally I was like, man, I feel like I should be doing something more. And I was kind of stuck at this income level of like mid six figures. This is like, you know, 2016. And uh, I started to get to watch social media and just see like, what are people doing on, on content marketing? And ran to this guy, Gary Vee's content, right? And he's like, hey, you gotta do content. And he's like, you know, so I see this stuff for like a year. And then finally I'm like, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna start doing content. First year of videos, are like cringe worthy. You know how you know it's really bad when you can't even watch your own oh. video. Like you can't even get through it, right? So that first year I did that, even with bad content, my business forexed. Like even with just mediocre content just in my marketplace. So I would got seen by more people, just providing tips. And business started to take off. Then the next year it went up again and the next year it went up again. So I had this exponential growth and you know, uh I'm not flexing, but I'm just saying making millions of dollars when I wasn't before. But now I was like, oh, I got proof of concept, right? Mm -hmm. And then so many people within the industry would like, hey, Neil, could you come teach us how you're doing this? Or could you come speak at this event? Could you come do it? And I realized like there's a big opportunity in education. So in 2020, late 2020, beginning of 2021, we launched Ford Academy, which is teaching people within our industry how to do digital marketing, personal branding, all the things that I do to grow my business. And then we launched the Forward event, which was like, you know, in the beginning, just a few small people. And I kind of, uh, honestly, I got the idea from you and uh, we can get into that later, but like, I got the idea. I was, I think I saw you speak at an event four years ago and you were like, biggest strategy that I would tell you guys to do is do micro events. Yep. So I started with really small and then it just took off from there. And now we have thousands of students. Like you said, thousands of people come to our events and it was a side hustle, passion project that now has become like, it's animal. It's like huge. So on the three topics, how to make money, how to invest money, how to give it away to charity. Let's talk about how to make money side. Yeah. You wear different hats. You wear the real estate hat, the live event hat, the social media hat. Let's go through each of the three. On the real estate side, what are some ways people can make money in the real estate game in 2024? So I think the biggest way is to let people know what you do, right? So, so many people are like, you know, you could break it down really simply. If you want more business, you need to ask more people. And so people aren't asking enough, right? So I think you have to put yourself out there, but you have to ask in the right way. So I would tell people to brand themselves on social media and do, do it in a way where you're giving value. So you would give the tips you know, show success stories. I think this is one of the biggest things that's working right now for people in real estate is showing success and then asking for the business. So a lot of people will just post content and I made this mistake for a while, but they never ask for business. And so I thought that you had to throw like, you know, jab, 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 right hook. I thought you had to throw like a hundred jabs before you could hook, but yeah. really all you have to do is provide like three, four pieces of value, then you can ask for business. And so the way you do it, and this is something everyone can do is like, I call it a three-step system. It's like content connection conversion. So put out content that would be helpful to the audience, make a connection, show what's going on in your personal life, show behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff. And then the conversion was the most important part, ring the register, give them an opportunity to work with you. So like, hey, you know, this market's really challenging. 
but I'm finding deals every day. I'm helping clients every month close on deals. And so I put together a free guide. If you want it, shoot me a DM. Like give, make a call to action and people will reach out to you. And so I started doing these calls to action and, they, and you have so many people come into your, into your top of the funnel. So I think the problem with real estate is like, you know, people are like on one end, they're just starting off the process. They're just, you know, not interested. They're, they're learning about it. And on the other end is a close to deal. The realtors and, and lenders are just on the other end waiting with the basket, like waiting for people to just hop in. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to make this whole journey across this platform on my own. And if you give them one step in the middle, you'll win. So just give them like a free guide. It could be a webinar, could be an event. Come learn about like how to buy your first rental property. You could do like a micro event, you know, so just create a step in the middle for them. And all of a sudden you'll have way more leads. So I think that's the best way to do it. With the event space, you have forward events. Yeah. When you go from 200 to 500 to 700 to 1,000 to 1,200, 1,500 type size of events, is there money in throwing large format events? Well, we've seen a lot of people waste, lose a lot of money in For events. Sure. Like you can just get, you can quickly get under their, under, underwater because all the bills start adding up. You know, the venue, the food, the speaker fees, travel, all, travel, like, and then your team and the merch hotel and hotel blocks, hotel block. Yeah. Like all of a sudden catering, you get the bill and corking you're like, fee. what's a corking fee? Yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, this is charging. Like I just wanted to give people coffee one morning and then it's thousands of dollars. Right, and they're like $4 dollars 50 per coffee that you're giving away. Yeah. And you're paying like $20 for a croissant. It's like, right. everything's just ridiculous. And so the bills get out of control. So what I quickly realized, and this is, Luckily, because I, I was in masterminds and I was in all these programs, I would ask people who had done it before. So I remember reaching out to you and saying like, hey, Dan, how do you do this? Yep. Or hey, Cole Hatter, how do you sell from stage? Or hey, so-and-so, like, how do you, Billy Jean, help me with something? And so all my mentors kind of just gave me the blueprint of like, hey, you want to put together a program and then you want to offer it at your event and make sure it's really valuable and all that stuff. So um, there is an opportunity to make money on what you sell at the event, but the event itself for me has proven to be like best break even. You know, maybe you lose a little bit, but you make it up in the, the whatever your offer is at the event. And I remember you told me this. You're like, Neil, if you don't have an offer, I have people in my network that will make an offer at your event and split the revenue with you. And you'll make money that way. Like, there's so many ways to do it. But I see people just do the event because they want the clout and the, you know, they want to accelerate their brand, which is, it does help you. But unless you make a good offer at the event, you're going to lose money, I think. Yep. So that's what I figured out. And then uh, that's the way we monetize. Uh, we launched a mastermind. We have education programs and we sell these at the events. I think at our last event we did, um, we broke even close to break even on the event, but we sold $1.5 million in education at the event right? On, in, in one day in 24 hours. So it can be really profitable if you do it right. On the social media side, are there ways for people again, going to 2024 to make money from social media? Yeah. So it's like, what are you selling? I think like, you know, you, you can't get paid much from the from Instagram and Facebook and things like this. But I think if you have a program to sell to monetize. So, for example, uh, we're nowhere near where we're going to be in terms of like sales for forward. Uh, but last this year, we're just wrapping up 2024, 2023, right? We're wrapping up 2023. We did four and a half million dollars in sales without running any ads. This is all from just my Instagram. And so that's not like a huge number. It's going to get bigger, but it's, it well, it shows you like, well, there's people doing 10, 20 million sure, too. Sure. But like, for me, it's a big number. That's cool. Especially given that I didn't run one single ad. And so the way you do it is like, do you have a valuable program or service to offer? So all year I'm teaching, I'm providing it. I'm leading by example. I'm showing my stuff works. And then once in a while I make an offer. Hey, look, we have a new program. You can join it. Hey, there's a, there's a webinar where I'll teach you X, Y, Z at the end of the webinar, I offer a chance to join my programs. I throw a massive event at the event. I offer a chance to join my mastermind. So I put together like kind of a, a suite of programs and then I offer it through my content on social media. So I think the, like the content itself doesn't really pay me until I'm actually monetize it by selling something on social. Okay. So we talked a bit about the making money side on those three core topics. What about an investing side? Let's talk through a couple different topics there. Investing on the real estate side with so many options from short, short sale houses, flipping houses, yeah. Airbnb, long-term holds, renting out this, flipping that. But there's so many options, fourplex, duplex, live in one of the units of the fourplex, get an apartment. We're bombarded with information of like, oh, just buy an apartment building. It's easy. Oh, buy, yeah. a, buy a storage unit. No, four. What? <laughs> like there's yeah. just so many things with someone out there that's been working, you know, making 60 grand a year, then 80 grand, then 100 grand, pro progressing through their career, saving up some money. They finally have some money saved up, 50K, 70K, 100K. They're ready to do a real estate deal. What should they be considering? 
So I think you should look for, you know, properties that can give you a positive cash flow if you're gonna buy it for a rental. Now, if you don't own any real estate, just getting into your first deal as a primary home with the low money down, like that's the best, the first step. And then you can eventually, that can become your first rental and you can rent that out and buy another property. So starting off with those first deals, looking at like the lowest risk way, like a lot of people say, you know, it's risky to buy real estate. For the first deal, you only need to put up 5% of your own money. So like the bank's taking the most majority of the risk. You have to only risk a small amount, but I think looking at like, what would this property rent for? And it gets more difficult when prices are so high. So there's different creative things you can do. Like, you know, my buddy Pace Morby taught us the strategy where you can take over people's low rate loans and then buy property. So there's so many different strategies getting into a single family home or a duplex. So I would say start with a one to four unit property, like getting into apartments and commercials more complex, but start with the one to four unit property. But I think about this, Dan, like, I think, uh, you know, my investments are boring. Like we own a portfolio of, of rental properties and I own like the S and P 500 mm -hmm. and I own like some Bitcoin and I don't even check it. Like I lost my login for a while. And then I, I mean, I don't look at my investments. I think like about taking risk with the business side and gambling there. But then once I've worked really, really hard to make all that money, I don't want to take the risk all over again with the money that I worked so hard for. So I like putting my money into just boring shit that just, I could just sit it, <laughs> set it and forget it yep. and not worry. And then I'll take all my gambles on the business side. Like, I don't know. Have you ever heard this? Like people work so hard and then they put it into like a high risk thing and they lose it all, you know? All the time. Yeah. And it's like, Watch bro. It happen all the time. And I've made that mistake too. Like, hey, putting into, I mean, I've made like some early stage uh, venture investments that haven't paid off some the companies are already bankrupt like you lose the whole thing so it's like high risk but i guess it could be high reward as well so i'd rather just take the risk on the business side why is it important for people to invest into their personal brands man so that has been the uh single greatest investment i've ever made and, and it, like it's not even close roi on anything else and that's because like once you have that brand it can translate to so many things. Like I'm doing real estate and mortgage right now. Then I, I didn't know I was going to be in the events business. All of a sudden I'm in the events business. I didn't know I was going to have an education company. All, all of a sudden I have a multi-million dollar uh, education company. So it's like so many doors will open because of your personal brand. Like, you know, and so I think about this all the time. Like, hey, you know, you'll connect with people you never thought you could connect with. So many doors will open. You'll have opportunities. And then you could switch industries too. So if say... I'm bored with real estate mortgage. I could start an insurance company tomorrow because of my personal brand. So I would encourage everybody to just start, you know, just hit record. And you'll go through that cringe phase of like, man, this sucks. I, I suck on camera. I'm not getting any views. But eventually, if you stick with it, you get better. You can't lose. Should people invest into growing their social media following? You mean like pay for ads uh, shout outs yes. yeah i think i think there's like select ways you can do it for example like on twitter you know having distribution helps you grow your audience but like on other platforms shout outs don't work as good as they used to years ago so you could just be wasting money i will tell you this anybody who buys followers or buys things on social media it's 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 usually going to harm you For it sure. ruins your yeah so you just ruins your account you get no engagement what's the point in having a million followers if when you post 300 people see it like there's no point i would rather have a thousand people who really talk who is real community versus 10,000 or 100,000 people who you don't even they don't even see your videos and when you post so i would say to build a real community the way you can invest is like invest in you know in terms of the time it takes to create more content distribution those types of things and then i think uh on certain platforms right now there is an opportunity to run ads to get more people to your account but it's like you have to do it selectively. I think the best way to do it right now, we have a cool opportunity because the platform will just show your videos to people for free. For example, on Instagram, you could have 183 followers and go viral with the video. We see it every week. Somebody reaches 10,000, 100,000, million people with no followers. So you can grow your account without having to spend a lot of money. Let me walk you guys through why you should never, ever, ever buy fake followers. Yes. First of all, there's no reason to. Nobody cares. You have 12,000 followers and you want to have 112,000 followers because you think it looks cooler. Nobody cares. Yeah. Second of all, when you have 12,000 followers and four, five, 600 people engage, well, more reach will happen, more interactions will happen, and your account and your content will get spread more. Let's say you have a 120,000, where it's 12,000 real and 100,000 fake followers. The platform, let's use Instagram as in the example, the platform thinks you suck. Why? Well, the same four or 500 people engage, 
but instead of there being 12,000 followers, the platform thinks you have 112,000 followers. And so the four or 500 that are engaging looks tiny. It looks like a quarter of a tiny little percent are engaging. So what does Instagram do? The algorithm doesn't show it to anybody else because it looks like you suck. It looks like your account sucks. It looks like your content sucks and nobody cares. And so you're actually hurting yourself while you think for macho or cool or like I just need to fit in or I just need it for this or that. You are hurting your account by buying fake followers. If you have already done it or someone added it to your account and someone else did it for you or an agent or manager did it, start to unfollow them. Start to try to not unfollow them, but you know what I'm saying? Have them unfollow you. There are actually apps and platforms and services now to help you remove what's called bots, fake followers, those little eggs, those type of accounts. They are hurting your engagement. You do not want fake followers. Yeah, 100%. And, and there's one thing you could do is uh, you could start a new account. So I remember starting an account, Dan, in 2018. And then I accidentally, like I hired some of this company to help me grow it. They did the same thing. They bought followers and all this. And then I would notice my engagement was in the toilet. So literally I just started over. I just started a brand new account, started posting organically, did it all the right way and it blew up. So um, one option is to like trying to move the followers, but the other option is to just start over. You can just start a brand new account and nobody cares. I think anybody, like anybody who knows anything about the platform can tell anyways. Like you see the account, you're like, man, this is not real. It's not legit. So you're not fooling anybody at this point. So we talked a bit about making money. We talked a bit about investing money. When someone gets to that next level, right? They've saved up money. They did a real estate deal. They've invested into their personal brand. They've got 50,000 followers now. Things are moving and shaking. How do they know when it's time to pour the gasoline on the fire and really go for it? Yeah, I think that's an individual question, like based on your ability to execute. So like what I do is I put myself in a pressure situation and then I have no choice but to come through. So like I will schedule the event, start selling tickets <laughs> and I haven't even done any work for the event. Right. But now I've got 500 people that bought tickets to the event. I better freaking show up and I better come up with a program. So like I figured out a hack for myself is like put, your, put some pressure on your shoulders and you will come through. And But if you're not that type of person, then maybe you want to do it a different way. So everyone's going to have individual you know, use case. But I will say this, there's like, you know, definitely like uh, everybody who I talk to who's had success in business in some shape or form in terms of a program or a new product or this, they all tell me their one regret was they didn't do it sooner. Like, so, you know, a lot of us in this industry, like you're meant to do something more than what you're doing right now. You have that kind of itch to do more. And so once you get that initial piece of success and, you know, you really want to go for it, I would put some pressure on my shoulders. I would like do something really uncomfortable and see what happens, man. Take the shot. Like I said, I love taking risk in business, not with the money I made from business. So that's where I would like to get my kind of dopamine rush on the, on the gambling side of life. You know, why do you put so much time into your social media content? Because, uh, it's literally everything. Like it's allowed me to connect with so many people. It's the reason why I'm on this podcast right now. Like it's, it's just going to open so many doors. And for me, you have so many things you could be offering to people. And if you don't have anybody on the other side to listen to those offers, then you're not gonna be able to sell as much stuff. So I just think it's the best way, it's the most efficient way to reach people. Like a lot of people say, I don't have time to create these videos for social media. It saves you time. You know, in the beginning, what takes you an hour is gonna take you 15 minutes. Like you guys talked about how many podcasts you shot just today. Two of them are already in editing, they're ready to be published. Like the distribution just ramps up. And so in the beginning, it does feel like it's a time commitment. But trust me, as you keep going with this, it gets way easier. It just gets really quick. And now you're speaking to, in the beginning, hundreds, you know, maybe 10, hundreds. And then now you're speaking to thousands of people every day. You just can't get that type of distribution anywhere else. You can't shake that many hands anywhere else. Right. So let's talk about, about the charity side, the philanthropy side of things. Why do you think it's important for people to either incorporate charity into their personal lives, into their households, or into their business brand culture? So it's so important because like, you know, it sounds kind of cheesy, but you don't really know, um, you, you don't have a certain level of fulfillment until you start giving away, you know? And I just started noticing this as I've gotten to like a little bit of success for the last few years. Um, I haven't launched my own charity, but what I do is I just participate in all my friends. And so you guys are doing a toy drive today. Yeah, I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna bring a bunch of toys. And uh, people are doing, Cole does these things where he builds homes in Mexico and then other friends do different things for kids. And like, all I wanna do is, I'm, I'm still working on what I want to do personally with my business to launch. But in the meantime, if you look in your network, especially in the network of entrepreneurs that we work with, 
everybody's doing something you know there's so many charities you can get involved in and so if you don't have one just support one of your friends like just jump into their charity and you can you can get into it and i'll tell you like it gives you so much more fulfillment when you start doing this and i found that even within our programs sponsoring people who can't afford your pro product or service we sponsor kids to come to events um you know just doing things where you give away your programs and services is another form of charity that gives us a ton of fulfillment so as you're growing through your career and especially the last few years as you've been blowing up on, on social media, your business, et cetera, how do you decide what to focus on when there's so many different options of time and energy and mental focus? How do you decide? It's tough because you go on social and there's a guy talking about this crypto thing and then NFTs and this event and this. Um, Squirrel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you're just like going all over the place. So what I found is I like to um, you know have big goals for the year. Like, okay, here's the big goal. I want to do this event. We're going to get this many people there. I'm going to work towards that. And so like, what are your big goals? And then we can start working towards those. And I want to map that out in advance. Jesse Itzler has this huge calendar. He calls it like big ass calendar for the year. Mm -hmm. And he sent it to me at his house, like, and so you can map out your next year. Like, what are your big goals? Yes, shit's going to change. I'm sure you'll have some opportunities to come here and there. But if you're not the type of person who can manage multiple balls in the air, like I know Dan, you, you manage a lot of balls in the air at this point, but there was probably a point where focus was important to you. And so realizing where you're at in the game, just because I see Dan doing 20 businesses, I can't do 20 businesses right now. I can do two businesses. And then as I get later and I can delegate more, then I could probably do you know more. So realizing where you're at in the journey and then understanding from there. You know what's crazy, Dan, is like people who are super rich that tell you to diversify and spread your thing, most of all of them got rich from like one thing. Mm -hmm. So that means like that's the blueprint right there, just to focus on that one thing and do really well. As you get more wealth, then you can spread around and do all these and, and diversify and do 20 different businesses. So I would tell people to focus on one or two things and just go hard. What do you think people are doing right and wrong on social media today? So I think um, a lot of people are just posting like commercials. So they'll just post for their business like a sales ad. It comes across like an ad. Also, there's this thing that's happening right now where if the videos are too produced, so you can buy like $30,000 worth of gear. If it's too produced, nobody will watch the video because it looks like an ad. It looks like a commercial. Our eyes are trained to like turn away from that stuff. So I think people, like they say, Dan, that everyone's got like a minuscule attention span. I think that's true. But I think what's more, what's probably more accurate is they just have a very selective attention span because somebody will listen to your podcast for an hour, but then they won't have one second to watch your video on social. Right. So they're just being selective with what they watch. So I'll tell you this, work on how you start the videos that first couple seconds. So many times people pop up on, on camera and they're like, hey guys, what's going on? This is Neil, happy Tuesday. Just wanted to tell you, just wanted to pop on here and tell you X. You can just go straight to X. You don't have to say, just want to pop on. You're already on, you know, just get to the point. So I would just tell people to get to the point quicker and don't waste those few, first few seconds and then don't make it too produced. What's crazy is we have videos that we shot with $10,000 worth of gear. And then we have a video that we just shot with the phone, just doing a quick green screen video on Instagram. And the green screen video is blowing up. And so I've gotten millions of views from videos that took just a few minutes to make with the phone. And so I'm thinking like that is the new trend of like just quick content that's very authentic. Um, you can tell, have you noticed this where somebody has a uh, different voice on social versus when you talk for to them sure. in person? They're like two different people. Absolutely. You have to be yourself. Like, so for me, what's worked the best is just being myself, Eventually, you don't give a shit what people think about you. It just clicks and you can just be yourself, be authentic on camera and don't make it too produced. Why should people join masterminds or attend business conferences? It's crazy. Like, you know, you talk about network is your net worth and it sounds kind of cliche at this point, but it is so true. Like I've gotten so many, so much acceleration in my business from just conversations with people I've met in masterminds. Uh, people can, it's the shortcut to everything, honestly, because you learn from people who have already done the thing that you want to do. And then you connect with people. And then there's, there's hidden upside, meaning like I've been in a mastermind where I didn't get the ROI right away, um, necessarily from the group. But then two years later, somebody I met in there because we got the connection, connected with an opportunity that makes me seven figures, right? So there's so many opportunities that will come just from being in the right room. And so for me, just knowing the right people has been the biggest accelerant to all my businesses. Uh, you, you just cannot underestimate the value of having the right connection. It's, it's so important. So as we go into 2024, which is an election year, there's gonna be a lot of chaos. Yes. A lot on social media, the television, 
billboards, bus stops, radios, musicians, actors, entertainers, and everybody in between is going to be talking about this election year more than ever. Yes. Right? Especially with the main characters that have been already been battling back to back to back. There's a lot of different opinions and emotions behind it. But also, the world is divided. We're watching wars. P- people can't talk o- about things on social media. Everyone, th- there's just so many things going on across social media content, television, etc. So someone listening right now is bombarded with chaos. Yes. How would you say to stay calm in the chaos? So I would just look at what are the goals you have? So for me, for politics, like when you watch all the crazy shit happening, uh, it's probably like, it's a recipe for disaster. I, w- I would say like this, poli- getting really deep into politics is the best way to be unhappy. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you're just, you, you can't do shit about it. You know what I mean? Like you're just arguing with people. How, how many times have you ever changed somebody else's mind about politics? You just, you're talking to a brick wall. You know what I mean? So for me, I used to watch all this stuff and staying involved. I just quit watching all this shit. I turned the news off. And so I don't know if, if, if that's the best advice for everybody, but for me, it's worked incredibly well. I just put my blinders on. I want to focus on how I can help my community, my customers, my family. So turn the shit off and focus on your friends, your family, your community, your customers, taking care, like there's people focused on trying to solve a world problem and they haven't even taken care of their business. Right. Like bro, take care of what, like, what do they say? Like sweep your porch first before you try and clean up the world. Like bro, clean up your own business first. And that to me has been the best way to make an impact because if I can help a thousand people make more money next year, then like that's huge. <laughs> Fuck, dude, that's, um, that's, that's a better impact than I could ever have arguing with people about politics on the internet. Forget that. Where can people find you online? Where can they find your businesses? Where they can find your whole world? So you can check me out on Instagram at Neil Home. And then uh, my event every year in summer, Dan's gonna be there this year. It's in July in Vegas. It's called the forwardevent.com. And then uh, we have Forward Academy where people can learn how to use all these strategies to grow their business. All right, guys, it is important for you to have these discussions about money. I'm gonna bring Neil back multiple times, by the way, just to be clear. Like we can talk about so many different categories of money and social. It's important for you guys to have these discussions about money because we grew up thinking it's rude to talk about money. As you guys know, here at themoneymondays.com, the podcast, etc., we think it's rude to not talk about it. So have discussions with your friends, family, followers, etc. Talk about everything from salaries, rent, apartments, houses, cars, loans, taxes, all the things that are part of real life. It's literally part of your life. You have to pay taxes. You have to pay your car note. You need a place to live. Food is expensive. It's getting more expensive. What is inflation? What do you mean things get more expensive every year? You have to have these discussions. We cannot be oblivious to it. We never could be b- before, but you can't afford to be now. And you should bring your friends, family, and followers along with you for the ride. You can join us on themoneymondays.com. I do a live stream, a live Zoom every Monday at 4 p.m. PST. We can do live Q&A with me, with some of my friends. Guys like Neil will come on there and speak and talk and answer your questions live, interactive. But most importantly, share these type of podcasts Go follow Neil across social media at Neil Home, N-E-E-L-H-O-M-E, correct? Yep. Across social media platforms, consume his content, check out what he's doing, and then see what things are interesting for you, whether it's real estate, social media, live events. These are the type of people that you follow. When you follow along with the drama and the chaos and things that are out there in the world, that's what your mind is going to be filled with. When you follow along with business entrepreneurs and people trying to change the world and improve the world and showcase business, live events, investing, etc., That's what's going to be in your mind and you'll become a better person if you follow along with better people. We'll see you guys next Monday on themoneymondays.com.